New at 5.30, it's a sad, strange mystery, kind of a reverse cold case. The rapes and murders of two young mothers. Investigators know who the killer is, but even after 38 years of trying, even with a lot of clues, and even with the best of modern science, they don't know who the victims are. So, tonight, we're going to try a different approach. In the spirit of victim advocacy, we're trying something like crowd sharing. Our Olivia LaVoice has a report tonight we will make available to every television and radio station, every newspaper and magazine, every blog and every podcast in the western U.S. But you'll see it here first. Olivia? Jim, when you hear about the DNA and the fingerprints and the tattoos, you'll be amazed these poor women have not been identified, but they haven't. We hope to use the power of the internet in this case. Someone somewhere knows these women. Scorching heat smothered Kern County in the summer of 1980, just before the almond harvest. On July 15th, the body of a woman is found bloody and battered in this orchard on the outskirts of Delano. She had been raped and stabbed to death. Three days later, detectives in Ventura County find a woman's body sprawled in the Westlake High School parking lot. She too had been raped and stabbed to death, five months pregnant with a son. Years pass, no killer found and no names for the victims. Then, 21st century DNA technology cracks both cold cases, connecting both crime scenes to one man. Anybody that's lay, that has to put their arms up and protect themselves from a flurry of stab wounds, um, that's pretty brutal. Someone was really angry with, with these girls uh, when he killed them. Police say they know the person who was the last to see these women alive, Wilson Schuest. DNA links Schuest to the rapes and stabbings. He's currently on trial for three murders, including that of the unborn baby boy. But that's not what this story is about. We're focusing on the victims. It appears after nearly four decades, no one even knows they were murdered. Friends, family, nobody has come forward. Two Jane Doe's, Kern County Jane Doe. This is a real person. This is, this is a young lady that uh, uh, was brutally murdered in 1980, and no one even knows who she is. That's unusual, especially with the, uh, the amount of media attention we've tried to give this case. We have more about her than we do on most Doe's. And yet we've not really had a single inquiry about her. Ventura County Jane Doe. Somewhere there was a child in 1980 where their mother didn't come home. Most missing persons reports taken in Central California decades ago have since been destroyed. It's just hard for me to believe that somebody doesn't wonder every day what happened. This is where the case becomes personal for many. Investigators say both women previously had given birth. Children now most likely in their 40s if they're alive. Who raised them? Where are those children now? We could tell in both scenes that those victims were not killed at the scene. They were killed elsewhere and then brought to the locations. More questions than answers, and Wilson Schuest isn't saying anything. During the four-month window he was out of prison in 1980, he was staying in Lemoore, Kings County, about 95 miles from Bakersfield. Investigators believe somewhere between Lemoore and the 60 miles to Delano, Schuest found Kern County Jane Doe, killed her, and dumped her in the orchard before returning home to Lemoore. Investigators believe days later he headed back out to find Ventura County Jane Doe. But I believe that our Westlake girl was killed a long ways from where she was dump because she had virtually no blood in her body when we found her. Neither victim was found with a purse or ID. Both were similar in appearance, believed to either be Hispanic or Native American. Both were petite, about 115 pounds, between 5 foot 1 and 5 foot 4. Ventura County Jane Doe is believed to be a bit younger than Kern County Jane Doe, likely in her 20s. Post-mortem examinations showed both women were well-groomed, their clothing was clean. Kern County Jane Doe had screws and this metal rod in her left leg from a prior surgery. Her teeth were also distinct. She is missing all of her top teeth. Her bottom, her lower teeth are all um, in good order. 
Um, so I'm not quite sure what would have led to the removal of her top teeth. Ventura County Jane Doe's unborn baby was well nourished and pathologists believe there had been adequate prenatal care. She also had extensive dental work. Doctors, dentists, children. These women were known to someone. Each were likely abducted either from Kern